Methylene blue and intermittent fasting are really two peas in a pot, in my opinion. Personally, I'm a fan of methylene blue. I don't think that it's something that needs to be used every day. I think that considering a vast majority of people are mitochondrially dysfunctional and having some sort of metabolic trouble, methylene blue can be a nice sort of intervention to help overcome some of that, get things on the right track. Very similar to how fasting is, right? Like fasting is sort of this intervention for a lot of people. It's extreme caloric restriction, at least for specific periods of time. It's periods where your glucose is stabilizing. And from a metabolic and mitochondrial perspective, you're inducing all kinds of changes that are happening relatively fast. So it's a quick shot in the arm to sort of get things back on track. And that's kind of how I view methylene blue as well. So when you're combining them, there's interesting things that could happen, but I also want to provide context as to how you would use it properly. And then I also put a link down below for Bond Charge, who has amazing red light products. They have a red light therapy like sleeping bag. It's not, you don't literally sleep in it, but it has red lights on the top and the bottom. It's like a red light therapy bed, but at a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the price. And the thing is, is methylene blue interacts with the 660 nanometer wavelength light. So methylene blue is notorious for working with light synergistically. So if you're using methylene blue, I would recommend also using red light, at the very least getting some sunlight, but the red light can be hugely beneficial. And that link down below for Bond Charge is a 25% off discount link off any of their red light products, whether it's a panel, whether it's an infrared sauna blanket that also has red light, all kinds of different things but that link down below is gonna get you that 25% off. Okay, so the first reason and the first kind of application for methylene blue when you're fasting, first thing I have to note, you should not be taking a high dose of this stuff. We are talking a fraction of a milligram per kilogram of body weight here. Just for context, I'm about 185 pounds and I typically do not take more than four milligrams of methylene blue. I know people that are taking 16 on the daily or taking 50 milligrams north. Like, that is, to me, way too much. Okay, we are talking something that we are just trying to get a little bit of movement here in the mitochondria. What I mean by all this is fasting is good for the mitochondria from that perspective anyway, right? Like we're trying to improve metabolic and mitochondrial function. Methylene blue is doing the same thing. It's boosting mitochondrial function, but it's doing this by providing an additional electron donor but also a carrier. So you're kind of overriding and getting an additional metabolic boost. This can help get your mitochondria potentially back on track synergistically with fasting. So the reason, like the big overarching reason is they're both working along a very similar angle here. Now the next reason that methylene blue works so well for me with fasting is it has the ability to cross through the blood brain barrier. And you may have seen that recent paper that says it turns your organs, including your brain blue. Just so that you know, those were in doses that were used for like septic shock. We're talking significant, ridiculous doses, like 300 milligram doses. I hope that you are not touching anything near that. That is for absolute intervention in like a medical emergency. Anyway, it can cross through the blood brain barrier and it provides cognitive enhancement for a lot of people. And there's many people when they go through fasting periods, there's a phase for the first few hours of a fast where you're a little brain foggy. This could help give you a little bit more mitochondrial energy in the brain and give you that cognitive lift that you need so you don't feel so foggy if you're somewhat new to fasting. And if you're experienced with fasting, you might even feel like you're really on fire, like your brain's functioning very well. I'm fasted right now and I took four milligrams of methylene blue and my brain feels very clear. Now, number three is the interesting one because this is where we get into a gray area. It is a major antioxidant. It reduces oxidative stress, okay? But methylene blue is interesting because at certain levels it becomes a pro-oxidant. It's kind of a wild thing. Where we have to thread the needle is fasting is very stressful on the body. Okay, it increases oxidative stress, but the oxidative stress that fasting increases is actually what triggers the adaptation, right? So we do want a certain degree of oxidative stress when we're fasting, but what we have to be careful of is not going too far, right? So what I recommend is don't use methylene blue every day when you fast. They use methylene blue occasionally or maybe half the time that you fast because you do want some of the adaptation. But also what happens to people when they fast too much is you're loading a lot of stress on the body. I got first turned on to methylene blue by Dr. Scott Schur, who's a very good friend of mine and is also over at a company called Transcriptions. I linked to them down below if you want to check out their methylene blue. 
But the point is, is that he turned me on to it for traveling, right? When I'm on a plane, you have a lot of stuff coming at you and you have a, you're in a very vulnerable position from an oxidative stress standpoint and low oxygen perspective. So it helped me a lot with that. Well, it made me think, okay, well, when I'm fasting, I put myself in a compromised state too, no matter how experienced you are. So that's where methylene blue might help you out. You don't get the same antioxidant benefit from the fast, but you're still gonna get the caloric restriction effect. So net net, it's probably a win. There's also some indirect evidence that methylene blue can help support the autophagic flux, support autophagy within the body. And it could do this by, again, enhancing that mitochondrial function. And there may be some evidence that it helps what's called mitochondrial biogenesis or even mitophagy. Because methylene blue can reduce the oxidative damage, it puts yourself in a spot to go through that cellular cleanup a little bit easier. So we don't have the direct evidence there yet, but again, given the fact that it's making an easier environment for the body to kind of go through its cleanup, leads me to believe that it could be benefiting autophagy. And I've thought about this from an exercise perspective too. Like, are you getting more autophagic benefit during a fast or even during exercise with methylene blue? Again, a little bit still out there in terms of a concrete answer, but it probably is the case. Now, let me take a second to mention the fact that methylene blue is a synthetic. So yes, it's something that is a synthetic compound. It's not gonna be for everybody in that case, but there's also a time and a place where synthetic compounds can really help us out. If you are someone that is metabolically super healthy, you're super fit, I would recommend only using methylene blue when you need the extra advantage, right? So I use it occasionally for that reason. But if you're someone that's on a journey where you're trying to like improve and you know that maybe you've dealt with some of these other metabolic issues before, having a little bit of a synthetic intervention is probably not problematic. And just to kind of debunk some of the things that are out there or at least acknowledge, you're probably not diminishing ATP production if you are metabolically unhealthy, right? So if you are metabolically dealing with insulin resistance and stuff like that, you are more likely to increase your ATP production. But yes, if you are very healthy and you're using it all the time, you could speculate that there could be a dependency. However, I've never seen any evidence to support that a dependency would actually develop, like you would decrease ATP formation in a healthy individual. I still think we are exposed to so much in the way of pro-oxidants and just other oxidative stressors that it's probably a net positive, at least occasionally. Now, from a fasting perspective, there's a neuroprotective component as well. So when we're fasting, we obviously have ketones that form and that's neuroprotective, but methylene blue could synergistically work with that as well because that's providing an additional neuroprotective compound or attribute, right? So if our, we're ultra stressed, we have high levels of norepinephrine, we're dealing with the stress of a fast in the first place, we're just adding an extra protective buffer. One of the things that I think is the most important to note is methylene blue is a mild MAOI, so a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, which means that it has a slight serotonergic effect. Now, the higher the dose, the more you're gonna experience this. And it's something that's pretty subtle, like it's not this extreme thing, but it's enough to feel good and kind of uplift you a little bit, which can help you out a lot during a fast. I've found in my experience that with fasting myself and with lots of thousands of people I've talked to about it, because I've talked about fasting for so many years, you have people that get lifted up when they fast and you have people that really feel run down when they fast. Now, I think you should always listen to your body, but when you're feeling run down, something like methylene blue could help you out with this. And the last thing we want is to feel depressed and down, right? So having this serotonergic MAOI effect could be beneficial, but also something that you should note is that if you are on SSRIs or any kind of other like MAOI or anything like that, just be aware that it could interfere with that. But again, the dose usually has to be fairly high. So do your own research there just to be sure. Now, the big piece is it's going to enhance oxygen use. Okay. So if you're exercising while you are fasting, you are already increasing beta oxidation, right? Because you are already tilted in a fat utilization mode. So that means when you exercise, you're more likely to pull from fats. Now, when you pull from fats, those fats are combined essentially with oxygen to create energy, right? If you're sprinting or you're lifting weights, that is anaerobic without oxygen, right? So methylene blue may not be helping you in the anaerobic states all that much, but it is probably helping you a lot in the aerobic attributes, right? Because you're allowing yourself to carry more oxygen. You're getting more oxygen, therefore able to oxidize more fat. When the cells can utilize oxygen better, you're gonna have more stamina, you're gonna have more endurance and likely more energy. You might even have more mental stamina through your workouts. 
So again, you're just enhancing, you're not enabling. Now, if you did it every day, you could make the argument that you're enabling, but it's really just an enhancement that could potentially get you more fat loss out of your fast as well. Probably one of the biggest pieces that really just goes without saying is because of all these attributes on mood, on energy utilization, on oxygen, on neuroprotection, these all play a role in our appetite suppression. So it allows fasting to be a little bit easier. So it makes it so you can get through the day with feeling like I have energy, I don't need to eat. It kind of gets rid of that impulse knee-jerk reaction to want to eat something when your energy is low. So again, Methylene Blue is one of these things that you need to do your research on. So I'll link out to a number of videos that I have on Methylene Blue. I'll link out to a big magnum opus, like giant interview with Dr. Scott Schur on the ins and outs of Methylene Blue and how it works, because I want you to be able to do your own due diligence. But intertwining it with fasting may have some really positive potential. And again, I'll also link out to the Methylene Blue that I recommend. And it's simply because there's a lot of heavy metals in methylene blue that's on Amazon and stuff like that. So just do your research there and make sure that you're making the right choice if you are going this route. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.